back to back wins for the Toronto Raptors. Whoa! They've won back-to-back -back contests, obviously, against the Portland Trail Blazers and the, and the lowly Charlotte Hornets. So it's not saying too much, but they go out there and they do what they're supposed to do. Tonight, in win a basketball game, albeit defense was non-existent for either team. Until, I'd say, the, what, the last half of the fourth quarter, where the Raptors locked down tight, didn't allow much, and pulled away with the 132-132. 120 victory over the Charlotte Hornets there at Scotiabank Arena tonight. I was there at the game, my first Raptor game, God, since Lowry's return last year. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been at a game, but um, great night tonight, great ball game. And look, let's be honest, Raptor fans, when you go to a game, you want to see offense. And I got that tonight. So really good job offensively by the Raptors, but like I said, defensively, it was a gong show. And you could tell it was going to be that way early on. First quarter... I think it was like 20 to 20, like four minutes into the game. And we're like, oh my, like what? no one's missing and they're all threes. This is insane. First quarter ends, the Raptors win it 35-34. And you're thinking, okay, well, it's, it's going to come down at some point, right? Well, in the second quarter, the Raptors offense was actually better. The bench unit was phenomenal again today. The Shawn Michaels Triple H duo of Precious Chua and Chris Boucher was in full force coming off the bench tonight. And we'll talk about them a little bit later on, but I thought they were absolutely phenomenal today. The whole bench. The Malachi, you know, didn't make shots, but I thought defensively he was good. Uh, Coloco was great. Chris Boucher was phenomenal. Precious was great. And even though Wancho was a minus, I thought he did, gave you a lot of effort and a lot of energy. I, again, I thought, honestly, I thought the, the bench guys made a, did a better job than the starters. And look, the starters got their points, right? OG had 22, Gary had 24, Pascal had 28, Fred had 11, Scotty had 7. They did what they got to do. But if we're talking about energy and important minutes, I think the bench did a hell of a job. Because in that second quarter, Pascal played the full first quarter. And... They sit down a lot of guys for the for the, on the bench and right. What do we see in the last game? Right, you saw Gary with a lot of the bench guys. We saw that again today. It looked sluggish to start the second quarter. And we're like, well, yeah, okay. You can't expect this to be great all the time because let's be honest, the talent's not really there coming off the bench. Just a lot of crazy guys causing havoc. Then after the timeout, Nick Nurse calls. The Raptors come out and they go what they go crazy. You know, Precious starts drilling threes. Chris Boucher's condescent shots like crazy at the rim. I thought they were really good in the paint. Coloco's flying around on the glass. I thought he was phenomenal. And the Raptors win that second quarter. They score 37 points. They had 72 at the half. They only allow 32. You're plus five in there. You're plus six going into halftime. You're in a really good spot. But how are you going to come out in the third quarter? And they came out against the Raptors starters with a punch. And at one point late in the third, they had a two-point lead. Now, the Raptors do, end, I think, end up getting a two-point advantage heading into the fourth quarter. They were minus four in the third, 28-24. So you're going into the fourth quarter within a one-possession game. So basically an even contest. And in the fourth, as I mentioned, the defense finally started to lock down. And guys like Lamelo, guys like Terry Rozier, guys who were making buckets basically all night long started to miss. And the Raptors were obviously contesting those shots a lot harder than they were uh, earlier in the game. And also, you know, look, let's be honest here. You're not going to make contested shots all the time. They were making some. Melo was making some deep threes. Terry Rozier had a couple of really nice threes, especially that one in the corner. That uh, was phenomenal. But one play I want to talk about. And it's early in the fourth quarter. You're only up by two. You're, you know, you're trying to build a lead here. And Christian Coloco gets the ball up around the three-point line. And Gary, what does he do? He just cuts right to the basket. And Christian Coloco, man, you know, we talk about him being reba rebounding and being seven foot and blocking shots and all this stuff. The pad, the dart that he threw to Gary right in the shooting pocket. Gary didn't try hesitate or anything, went right up with it, got the bucket, count it, and the foul. An incredible pass. Leading to a three-point play. And the Raptors offense 
didn't look back the rest of the way in that in that fourth quarter. Like I said, defensively, they locked down in the second half of that fourth quarter, and they win that quarter 36-26 and win the game 132-120. I thought it was, again, not a, per, not a pretty effort defensively. It was pretty evident when you allow 120 points, right? It's not good. You dropped 132. You dropped a season-high 23-pointers. 20! And you can kind of see that early on in the game when no one was missing. But, you're, but us as Raptor fans, what we've seen from this time, from this team over and over, you're waiting for that four or five minute drought of no offense. And the way they were shooting the ball, you're like, God, you really can't afford to have one of those. And to be honest, they really didn't. There were moments where they couldn't make shots in a couple, two or three straight possessions. You're like, okay, here we go. But then they made a shot, like Malachi Flynn, big time corner three, late in that. In, was it in the uh, end of the third quarter there when you were down by two? Gets the corner three to give you the one point lead back, and I believe the the Raptors did not allow them to get another lead after that shot. And that was Malachi's only make of the night, but it was a big shot in a, in a pretty key moment there. So I was I, I liked what I saw again. Like I said, defensively it wasn't great, but you won a damn game. Enjoy it. Let's get to the player stats. Pascal was on fuego early. End of the game with twenty eight points, eight rebounds, seven assists. Shot ten of sixteen from the field. Phenomenal. Six of nine from the free throw line. At one point he missed uh, two free throws in a row. Uh, it was just kind of shocking. Two of six from three-point range. Uh, again, he was just incredible offensively in the first quarter, really. I think he had four, half of his points, 14, uh, in the first quarter alone. Um, but then the ball started humming, right? So with eight points, seven assists, or eight rebounds, seven assists as well. Just a really good night overall from Pascal. Scotty Barnes, all right. All right. We all know the inconsistency we've seen this year with Scotty, Right? And we see him tonight with, again, seven points, five rebounds. He had seven dimes. Like, look, watching him live is different than TV. And it's very stupid to say because you're like, well, of course it is. He shot two of five, three of four from line, oh, one from three as well. I noticed a lot of things with Scotty today. First off, the vision and the passing is just incredible. But it looks like the dude's playing hot potato out there. Every time. But not every time. Most times, when Scotty gets the ball outside the painted area, it's a quick, quick touch pass somewhere else. Get out of my hands. Wait, somebody else. Just go. I'm like, dude, Scotty, hold on to it. You know Plumlee's gonna sag off you. We talked about that with Nurkic. And with Plumlee, he's probably gonna do the same thing. And if he's not, and he's gonna come out to guard you, attack the damn paint. And he did at one point in the first quarter. He gets that spin move layup, which he just dissected Plumlee. And you're like, yes, Scotty, that's what you can do. And he didn't go to it again. I think all three of of his free throw makes were in the dying couple minutes of this game. So for the most part, he had four points all night long. And he only took five shots today. Albeit, yes. You know, Gary was making shots. He 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 was really feeling it. But again... Christian Coloco took more shots than you. Like, put that into perspective. I love to see Scotty, man, just be more consistent with your aggressiveness. It's 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 painful to watch at times. It really is, because you know it's there, but he just doesn't want to do it. It looks like, and it's God. I don't know. You guys might feel differently about it, but when I was there, I was just I was every time I'm like Scotty, there's Scotty in the corner. Give it to him. And they give it to him. And I'm like, all right, no, no, it's already gone from his hands. Okay, well, how about you give it back to him? Okay, he's got, no, no, mm, it's gone again. It's like, God, Scotty. I don't know. I know you guys could feel differently, but just from watching it live, it, it, that, that, that was the vibe that I got from that. Gary, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Ever since this dude, the trade talk started, this dude's been balling out. Obviously back now in the starting unit and make it, and just being a bucket maker. 24 points, two rebounds, one assist, shot six of 14, eight of eight from the line, was four of 10 from three, two steals and a block for GT. Just incredible, you know, just dissecting guys offensively, weaving in and out of traffic, fine. And you know what? He made a lot of passes today. We don't talk about that a lot, but I thought it was a lot of dribble drive, and when it's not there, he's kicking it, and he wasn't forcing it. I really liked Gary's game today. I thought he looked really comfortable in his offense, and 
you love to see that. You really do. Uh, Fred, yeah, the shot wasn't going for him today. 3 of 10 from the field. You know, 11 points, 7 rebounds, 8 assists. I love the 7 and 8, don't get me wrong, but 11 points, eh. 3 of 10 from the field, 3 of 3 from line, 2 of 7 from 3. But what did we say in the last video? We said that no matter what the percentage is, in years past, it's been, doesn't matter how he's shooting tonight, you give Fred a clutch moment, I want that ball in his hand taking that catch and shoot three. Or that dribble three when he's got a good look at it. Where did he get his two threes tonight? In the fourth quarter. When you needed them. Fred knocked down those threes. Otherwise he was 0-5 the rest of the game. But when you needed those shots to drop, Fred got them. So yes, 11 points on 3 of 10 eh, and 2 of 7, eh, not great. But the timing of those two threes was great. OG, those corner threes were money tonight from him. Made 22 points, 3 boards, 2 assists, 8 of 12 from the field, 6 of 7 from 3. Wow. It, it, when he does this and, and shows us this type of stuff, man, oh man, it... It opens everything up for the Raptors offensively. When he's that offensive threat from the corner, it changes your offense. Because, or, it changes your offense because the defense then has to change. They have to they get the guard more heavily, right? Because in the early goings, he was getting those looks and he was drilling them. I'll be everybody was, but it doesn't matter. Defeats the, it doesn't matter. It defeats the purpose. OG... Knocking down those threes tonight was a breath of fresh air. You know, watching Pascal drive, find him in the corner. Watching Scotty drive, bullet pass right to the shooting pocket of OG. Drill it, nothing but net. It's just, mm, it's so nice to witness. Can you do it consistently? We haven't seen that. But, phenomenal tonight for OG. Now, let's talk about the bench. And this is the fun part that we want to talk about, right? And oh my gosh, we're 12 minutes in already. I didn't realize that. Uh, I will kind of speed through this a little bit more then. Christian Coloco, six points, eight boards, couple assists, three of seven from the field, not great. But plus 11 on the floor, phenomenal job. Like I said, aggressive defensively, was just all over the place. So fun to watch. Uh, and that's like what, back-to-back -back games like that for Christian? Let's keep this thing moving. I love it. Chris Boucher, uh, Again, the energy, the offensive glass, just crashing every rebound, being a pain, the energy guy. That's what he was today. 12 points, 7 boards, 2 assists, 5 of 6 from the field, 1 of 1 from the line, 1 of 2 from 3. That 3 was in the fourth quarter, and a plus 9 while he was on the floor. Precious drilled three threes in the third quarter, and everyone's like, oh my god, this guy's going to get red hot. He's like second half Precious all over again. This is beautiful. 13 points, 2 boards, 5 of 9 shooting, 3 of 5 from 3. Plus eight while he was on the floor. And I didn't write the numbers down for Malachi, but I did write a plus nine on the floor. Your bench units put in a huge effort tonight. That's why you're leading minutes, guy. Pascal, 35 minutes. Isn't it incredible when you have a bench that's competent? Because the last two games, they've played really well, and no starter has touched 40 minutes. There's a reason to that. Team stats real quick. They shot 55% from the field and 43% from three. As I said, the defense, meh, not great. 73% from the free throw line also for Charlotte. The Raptors shot 50% from the field. We shot five more field goal attempts than the uh, Charlotte Hornets. And 46% uh, from three. 20 made threes for the Raptors, a season high. It's crazy what this team can do when they get when they make their wide open shots. 82% from the free throw line as well. Plus 15 on the glass. Plus 12 in the offensive glass. But only five more field goal attempts. Really odd. And also, we lost the turnovers battle. 11-9. Very weird. However, when you dominate that much on the offensive glass and you destroy them 20 to 4 in second chance points, it don't really matter. So overall, a W is a W. You move on to the next one. Charlotte is in town still. They don't leave as they take on the Raptors again on Thursday night at Scotiabank Arena, 7.30 tip-off there, right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed yet another W, smack the like button. Do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game. Would you like, would you not like? From today's game for the Toronto Raptors, the Twitter and Instagram links are down in the description. So follow up, send me a DM. Do like great stuff. The Discord link is down below as well. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys, of course. Leafs edition tomorrow night as, uh, who, where are they? They come back home, right? Hold on.
Give me a minute. They come back home to take on these Nashville Predators. Scotia Bank Arena, 7.30 buck drop tomorrow night as the Leafs look to, to, to what? They've won what? One or two in a row now? Yeah, well, they look to win their third consecutive. And as for the Raptors, they look for the third consecutive win for the first time this year on Thursday as they host these same Charlotte Hornets at 7.30 at Scotiabank Arena. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the W tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.